How to make a perfect revenge. Robert first changed his enemy from male to female. Then he gave his enemy a facelift. Robert also made his enemy look like his dead wife. Then Robert lives with his enemy every night. They also sleep in the same bed and have sex. Robert's revenge is like finding a partner for himself. But for his enemy, it was a disgrace. He suffered the daily psychological torture of changing from male to female. First, he had his male genitalia cut off. Secondly, his rule was destroyed, but why would a strong man be forced to change his sex? It turns out there's a big conspiracy behind it. Robert is a plastic surgeon. He is serious and crazy. Robert first forcibly shaves off his enemy's beard. Then he used anesthetic to put him into a coma. Robert tied him to the operating table with black tape. Robert then operated on the lower half of his body. When he woke up after the anesthetic had worn off, he found that the penis he had been with for years was gone. Robert brought out a bunch of dilators for him to use with him. Supposedly, this way he could get twice the effect of the drug. His genitalia had changed dramatically. The next step was to give him a facial reconstruction. Facial remodeling is Robert's specialty. And so the enemy was repeatedly put on the operating table by Robert. He ended up looking like Robert's dead wife. But male skin is rougher. A qualified work of art obviously cannot have flaws. To make the skin perfect, Robert took a sample of the pig's blood and broke down the cells to create a genetic modification. He then sutured the skin to the body structure to create a complete artificial skin. This skin is not only resistant to insect bites, it is also extremely heat resistant. The newly transplanted skin is very fragile. Robert then dressed Vera in a special contouring garment. This garment covered and concealed every inch of Vera's exposed skin. Six years after the surgery, Vera has become a beautiful, sexy woman. Robert enjoys admiring his artwork. Every detail of Vera's body has been shaped to perfection. Vera had become a woman, except for the fact that she could not have children. But there was a difficult problem at hand. Robert's experiment had worked. But what should he do with Vera? Does he choose to keep Vera in captivity or kill her? Apparently Vera also realizes the seriousness of the problem, so she offers herself to Robert and is willing to do anything for him. Robert is confused by what Vera says. He couldn't tell if Vera was in love with him or was she just pretending to deceive him. After all, beautiful women are the most deceitful of all. Robert's mother, Marilia, urges him not to keep Vera with him any longer. She will kill you if you keep treating her like this. But at this point Robert's feelings for Vera have also changed. He had already fallen in love with Vera and couldn't stop. For safety's sake, Robert dismissed all the servants. But something terrible happened as planned. The man in the tighter suit was named Zutza. He and Robert are half-brothers. He grew up without studying and became a gangster. Zutza had just finished robbing a jewelry store. So he came to Robert's house to hide from the police. Marilia saw the bad son coming and tried to drive him away. When she saw that Zatza's robbery of the jewelry store was on the news, she told him to get out of the house after dinner. Zatza, however, is not impressed. Zatza wants to wait for Robert to come back and get a facelift before he leaves. Marilia yells at Zatza for being so naive. They don't have a good relationship. The two brothers have a personal vendetta. Zatza stumbles upon Vera on the monitor. He thought this woman looked very familiar. Vera's beautiful face and sexy body quickly made Zatza horny. So he gets the urge. Zatza forces Marilia to hand over the key to her room. Marilia pulls out a gun and tries to get rid of Zatza. But after all, the strength depth between them is too great. Zatza was afraid that Marilia would ruin his plans. He didn't care about Marilia's pleas and obstacles. Zatza then tied his own mother to the chair. Zatza thus gets the key to Vera's door. Zatza captures Vera and forcibly has sex with her. Robert returns home from work at night. Robert saw the masterpiece. He had built and nurtured for many years being ruined by Zatza. Robert was furious and shot Zatza. He then cleanly buried Zatza's body. Marilia reveals to Vera in front of the campfire. Zatza and Robert grew up here. Zatza was in fact the son of Marilia and a servant. As soon as Zatza was born, the servant fell bad and ran away immediately. So that's one of the reasons why Marilia didn't like Zatza. Vera asks why Zatza said she looked familiar. Marilia then told Vera that her face was modeled after Robert's late wife's face. Twelve years ago Zatza came home for refuge, but Zatza fell in love with Robert's wife at first sight. They eloped within a few days of each other, but then there was a car accident on the way. The car burst into flames. Robert's wife was burned and disfigured. Zatza survived. Maybe Zatza felt sorry for Robert. He never returned home after that. Later Robert used his medical skills to save his wife. He was always very kind to her. Robert didn't mention anything about their elopement. 
Robert then worked to restore his wife to her former appearance. A few months later, his wife heard his daughter Norma singing outside the window, so she got up and got out of bed for the first time since the accident. She went to the window and was shocked to see what she looked like. The wife could not accept her appearance and jumped to her death. What's worse is that their daughter saw this scene. Norma's heart was hurt, and she became silent and insane. After all this happened, Robert felt very guilty. He stopped holding Vera captive and gave her freedom. Their relationship changed dramatically. Vera didn't choose to run away either. Instead, she lived with Robert. She takes care of Robert's life. The two of them slept very soundly that night. Robert relives the past in his dream. That day, Robert took his daughter to a party to help her forget her sadness again. The psychiatrist also said that Norma's condition was getting better. At the party, Norma and a man locked eyes. They went for a walk down the path, hand in hand. Instead, she was forced by the man into the woods and hurt. Robert goes out and walks down the path to find Norma. He saw the man driving away quickly on his motorcycle. Robert saw the clothes and shoes scattered on the ground and felt bad. Robert found a frightened Norma under a large tree. Robert thought that Norma must have been violated by that man. Norma's mental state had been worsened by what had just happened. Norma's condition worsened as a result. She was afraid to see her father. Norma often locked herself in the closet. Robert had no choice but to send Norma to a mental hospital. As a father, he was determined to get revenge for his daughter. His revenge plan is soon put into action. I am investigating the list of people at the party. Robert soon found out the whereabouts of the man. Vicendi's family owns a clothing store. He had been working as a tailor in the store. Robert knocked Vicendi to the ground, who was riding the motorcycle. Before Vicendi could react, he was injected with an anesthetic and fainted. When Vicendi woke up, he found that he was chained to his hands and feet and imprisoned in the basement. He was kept in the basement for days on end. Vicendi had nothing to eat in front of him, only a basin of water. Vicendi had no idea why he was imprisoned here. He didn't know who had taken him until Vicendi had a nervous breakdown. Robert appeared. The long hours of loneliness drove Vicendi to stop fighting. Robert doesn't reveal his identity either. Let's see what Robert did to Vicente. First, Robert took a high-pressure water gun and gave Vicente a bath. From then on, Robert changed the place where he was holding Vicente. He also brought him aromatic rice. That day the psychiatric hospital called. Norma had lost her temper and jumped off the building. Robert felt desperate, and so his revenge on Vicente is officially carried out. Robert called his medical team and secretly gave Vicente a free sex change operation and confiscated Vicente's tools of crime. Vicente lay in bed and asked Robert about why he cut off his penis. Robert then talked about Norma. He wanted to avenge Norma's death. Vicente argued that he had been trumped that night. Nothing seemed to have happened between the two of them, but Robert didn't believe him at all. He told Vicente in a firm voice that everyone has to pay for the mistakes they make. From then on Vicente was in despair. He was like a piece of meat on the table for Robert to slaughter. Meanwhile, Vicendi's mother came to the police to report the crime. The police only found a broken motorcycle at the scene of the crime. The police speculated that because of the location of the crime near the sea, Vicendi's body was probably carried away by the sea. But she didn't believe Vicendi could have been killed. She didn't stop looking for him. Robert also gave Vicenti breast enlargement surgery. Vicenti's masculine voice was changing silently. He was transformed into a woman after a series of surgeries. He was also forced to wear a shape-shifting suit to protect his new skin. Vicenti still couldn't accept the fact that he had become a woman. Just where Robert was not paying attention, Vicenti got up and attacked him and prepared to escape. But Robert had already installed a remote control on the door. Vicenti could not get out. Vicendi could not bear the humiliation and lost his temper. He angrily ran to the kitchen, grabbed a kitchen knife and decided he didn't want to live. Vicendi wiped his neck with the knife as fast as he could, but Robert used his excellent medical skills to save him again. After Vicendi's body was healed, Robert took off her mask. His face took on the likeness of Robert's late wife. Robert also gave him a new name, Vera. From then on Vera lost her freedom and lived in captivity for six years. Robert prepared a lot of women's clothes for Vera. Vera was initially very angry. She took out her frustration by frantically carrying at her clothes. Then she vacuumed the room. Robert was very understanding and bought her a lot of designer cosmetics. He was ready to let Vera take her natural course and become a real woman. The food and drinks were all delivered to her via a small elevator. The TV in the room had only three channels. 
Vera could only do yoga to pass the time when she was bored. She also kept a diary on the wall. Vera has been writing her diary from short hair to long hair. For six years Robert watched Vera every day. He looked at the elegant and beautiful woman in front of him, as if he saw his wife. Robert tried to control Vera's emotions. He would give her sedative drugs every day. There was not a single sharp object in her room. But accidents happen. Robert came home one day to find that Vera had committed suicide with paper. So he immediately picked her up and took her to the operating room for resuscitation. And so Vera came back to life. From then on, Vera also started to pay attention to her dressing. She now seemed like a woman. Under Robert's careful care, Vera gradually forgot her hatred. As time went on, Vera also fell in love with the man in front of her. She even offered to have sex with him. For a moment Robert was really moved, but he kept his desire in check. One day Robert was approached by Fulgencio, a colleague who had participated in Vera's mutation surgery. He wanted to buy Robert's villa and open a clinic. Robert said he was dreaming, but Fulgencio pulled out an old newspaper. He pointed out that the mail on the newspaper was Vera, who had undergone the surgery. He threatens Robert to give up the house. Vera happens to be home at the same time. She says that she was not held captive by Robert. Vera states that she was always a woman. Fulgencio, incredulous at Vera's words, turns his head and leaves. But as Vera Saturday on Robert's lap, she accidentally sees a picture of herself in the newspaper and gets emotional. Vera tried to control her emotions. During the night they had sex and felt a little dry. She needed lubricant, but there was none in the house. So Vera goes to the study and secretly puts the pistol in her bag. And all this was planned by Vera. When she came back upstairs, Robert had a feeling something was wrong. When he saw Vera take out the gun and appear in front of him, Robert understood everything. Vera had been acting like she loved Robert just to get him to let his guard down. With a gunshot, Robert stopped breathing. Mari Leo was shocked when she heard the gunshot. She hurriedly took out her gun and went to Robert's room. However, Vera secretly hid under the bed and shot her dead. Vera carefully wiped the fingerprints off the gun and escaped from the place where she had been imprisoned for six years. Vera returned to her family's clothing store. She greeted her mother and sister with tears in her eyes. But her mother didn't even know who Vera was until Vera told her the truth herself and the tragic experience of her missing six years. Both mother and daughter still couldn't believe it. To prove it, Vera wore the dress she had given to her sister. It was a secret that belonged only to the two of them. But in the days to come, what will Marilia do with her son? You are welcome to leave your opinion in the comments section. The director said in the interview, the Chindi didn't really violate Robert's daughter Norma. But after all, Norma's mental illness ended her life. So Robert had to make Vicini pay the price.